Okay, so today we're just going to have a quick poke around my desktop that I usually work and play in. And uh, the only reason I'm doing this is because there's no really um, any distros that I wanted to look at this week. So I thought I'd just show you around my system, the way I've got it set up. Um, base is Ubuntu 10.10, like most people, uh, in the variant of Ping iOS. And the only reason I use Ping iOS is because I find it easier to strip back some of the bloat that they put in Ping iOS than having to reinstall everything um, on top of regular Ubuntu. So uh, yes, uh, first of all, we'll just talk about my theme as like I do with any distro review. And the theme I'm using is Divergence. Now Divergence is a very nice theme. Um, it's, uh, it's a little bit hard to find um, and it's yeah, a little bit hard to track down on sites like Gnome Look. So I'll put a link in the description box. Um, uh, a few months ago or sometime last year, they uh, the OMG Ubuntu guys uh, did a story on the divergence themes and they kind of do cover any updates for it so um i'll put a link to uh, i'll put a link to where you can find this theme very nice dark theme there's a lot of variants here with the colors and also the window borders and things like that you can see with this one they've got the window borders on the on the left and then it kind of curves off into the lighter color instead of all being the same dark color um, and then the icon theme uh, is is its own unique uh, icon theme as well um, comes with it the the Okene, Oke, Okenza or something I don't even know how to say that but anyway it's a very nice icon theme they're very kind of metal looking icons so it looks quite nice on the docky down the bottom there um, yep background images um, I use a lot of backgrounds I go through a lot of wallpapers um, and generally speaking if you want to find uh, well I can't recommend too many good places for wallpapers but uh, one place that I find uh, helpful is uh, first of all, the um, Windows 7 uh, theme packs. Now, everybody's probably groaning at this point, but the Windows 7 theme packs are quite useful in reality because um, basically all they are, the Windows theme packs are packaged up as a dot .theme archive. But what's cool about them is that you can just extract them, pop into them as if they're a zip folder because I think they're actually a 7-zip archive renamed as a dot .theme. But you pop into them uh, and you can uh, pull the desktop wallpapers out of them and then use them on your own system. Now as far as getting desktop slideshows are concerned, what you have to do is you have to install a little application called Krebs. So if you Google Krebs, I'll also put a link in the description box, but basically it's as simple as adding a PPA and installing, um, installing the program. Now if you have a look under uh, preferences once it's installed, create background slideshow and basically all you do is come in here, choose, your, choose the ones that you're wanting to use, so uh, if I can read here for a moment, we'll go to pictures, then we'll go to wallpapers. Oops, and I went to the wrong folder, so we'll go into wallpapers. And then you can basically choose uh, any number of images. You just hold down control to select however many wallpapers you want to. And then you click open, and then it will put all of those, um, it'll put all of those files in here. And then it, you can uh, change image defaults, such as how long you want to display each image for and also how long you want the transition to be. Then you type in a name for it, press enter, and you're away. So that's a very useful little application. Uh, the fonts I'm using are the Lucida Grand font, which, uh, again, most people are going to go, oh, no, it's a Mac font. But no, I just find it nice. Uh, I just find it to be a nice font. I, I actually use the Ubuntu font uh, most of the time, but I've only just started recently using that. Um, Okay, applications, I'm only going to run through this just quickly. Games, nothing really to speak of. Accessories, there's a lot of Ping iOS um, pre-installed stuff in here that I should really take the time to take out. But uh, the main ones I use are Cover Globus, Cover Chooser, uh, Docky, Multisystem, and Synapse. Synapse is a great little app launcher. If you look at my Moon OS uh, review, you know what I'm talking about. But basically it's like Gnome Do, but I find it to be a lot faster and a lot lighter but it basically does everything that you'd expect it to, so Firefoxing, or maybe Bansheeing, or maybe um, any number of different things, really. And you can see my wallpapers changing here in the background, um, and I'll, I actually should just quickly talk about the, um, the wallpaper pack here. So if we open up uh, Chromium here, all right, and uh, the wallpaper pack that we're using is the, uh, is the uh, Tilt Shift Mega Pack from DeviantArt. 
Uh, it's a zip download here that's only 52 megs, so I recommend downloading it. I've actually found it to be pretty good. There's about 50 images in here, which all have a nice tilt shift effect, which I found is nice on the desktop, as there's only a section which is in focus and the rest is kind of blurred. So that makes it easy to work on stuff and stuff doesn't get lost in a high detailed wallpaper. So that's pretty cool. Um, default web browsing is usually Chromium, just I'd throw that in there. Um, yeah, that's about it really. Uh, and then under graphics, uh, Picasa, I do most of my photo management with Picasa. I also use Shotwell because it supports video. Rapid Photo Downloader is an excellent little program. Uh, it downloads photos and videos to whatever folder you want to customize. Uh, so that's a very useful tool. Up the top, of course, I've got the global menu going. Uh, this is actually the GNOME global menu. It's not the Ubuntu app menu. Um, the Ubuntu app menu has, uh, is great. It supports KDE applications as well. But uh, the global menu of GNOME is slightly more uh, configurable. You've got a few options here. You can uh, show the icon of the window that you're working with. Uh, you can also enable uh, showing the name and then doing window management with that name. So it's all pretty good stuff. Uh, and then uh, uh, under Internet Axel uh, for a download manager, I found this tool to be very, very helpful. Uh, it, it has proxy support, so that works. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't download absolutely everything on the planet, like you can't just drop in any URL and it'll work. But most things, if it's coming from a standard HTTP or FTP server, it'll work. Um, it does accelerate downloads a great deal, so I found it very... I found it very helpful. Um, yeah, that's all I really need to say there. You can um, select options to say quiet or verbose, so you can um, select uh, the maximum amount of connections, FTP search, etc. So it's very powerful. Uh, it really does accelerate downloads quite a bit, so uh, I definitely recommend checking that one out. I think it is in the standard repo um, for Ubuntu, so if you want to check that out, go ahead. Uh, Deluge BitTorrent Client, don't use it, I use Transmission, I really should take it out. Epiphany, I do use it on the on occasion. Firefox, I use that for compatibility. Uh, the rest of the stuff I don't really use too much. Skype, meh. Uh, the Torrent Episode Downloader, I've actually never used that one. PMS Linux, don't use it. In fact, I don't use a lot of this stuff. I really should take the time to clean some of this stuff out. Um, and then Office, Abbey Word and Genumeric are my primary ones. I do use OpenOffice for compatibility. And uh, I've been trying to get Office 2003 installed uh, under Wine on here, but uh, it's having a few issues. I could do it in Ubuntu Lucid with uh, Wine 1.2, but um, yeah, Maverick is having some issues. So yes, uh, Ease Presentation Editor is also a great application. It's a, it's a presentation slideshow creator. So basically you just select your theme and uh, voila, you can start editing away. You can choose background styles, background images, fill mode, and you can have different animations, etc. Very nice application, easy to use. Um, again, I'll try and put a, a link in the description box for the PPA for it. Um, I think you can actually find it with the elementary PPA. So if you Google, uh, if you Google the elementary PPA, you should be able to pick up ease as well. Um, sound and video, there's a lot of stuff here because I do a lot of sound and video work. Avid Emacs I use um, primarily if, if some audio is out of sync or there's something just fundamentally wrong with the video that I'm trying to use. I generally use that. Transcoding, I use Arista, though there is some issues between PAL and NTSC that ends up with some dropped frame rates, but uh, I won't spend too much time on that. Banshee Media Player is my default media player. Uh, Cheese Webcam Booth, we all know what that is. DVD uh, is my main DVD maker now. Uh, the others are nice, but this one produces the most reliable results and it really works well with, uh, with handling widescreen video on, on, uh, on non-widescreen TVs. It actually letterboxes it, it doesn't just pump it up so that uh, it cuts off half the image, so that's nice. Um, GPod, a podcast uh, client, which is a very helpful uh, podcast manager. GTK iPod manager, I don't actually use it that much, even though I do have an iPod. Banshee just works fine for me. Handbrake, I do use that a lot. Uh, the Jokosha um, audio editor, it's very nice. Um, be great to see some uh, some uh, loops and things like that, um, but but included by default. But again, you're getting too far into uh, GarageBand there, and they would probably, yeah, not appreciate that too much. So you can add different instruments here, hook it up to your MIDI instrument, and go hard. It's all pretty fun. Uh, we've also got uh, Mix, which is a DJing application. VLC Media Player does the bulk of my uh, video playing, apart from uh, Cover Gloobers, of course. Xvidcap, I don't use it anymore. 
Um, system tools, I've got a lot of good stuff in here. Bleach Bit, Alirius, which is the, or Alirius, or however you want to say that, which is just a GNOME tweaker. Uh, it's pretty advanced, really. Um, and of course, you've got Deja Dupe, I don't use that. Uh, Phone Manager, I use it on occasion. Oracle VirtualBox, all the time. Ubuntu Customization Kit, uh, I was going to use that to do, do a, uh, to respin a distro for someone. Uh, Ubuntu Tweak, Unet Boot In. Uh, Unet Boot In is definitely a very humble application, but uh, it's one of the most useful things that I've come across. Generally speaking, if you have compatibility issues with other USB creators, then this will sort it out for you. Um, Wine, I've got uh, Wine version 1.3 installed. I don't really have any Wine apps installed at the present time. But uh, yeah, I don't use Windows apps that much. I do have a Windows install on the same machine um, that I just have as a dual boot, but I only really ever use it for compatibility or for testing things, etc. Uh, Tomboy Notes is the other application that I use all the time, and uh, yes, can't recommend that one enough. And of course, along the bottom here, we've got Docky, um, which I turned the I turned the zooming off because it got a little bit on my nerves for some reason. Some of the applets I've got uh, I've got the logging out and lock screen. I've got recent documents, I've got a clock, um, I've got the network manager, a CPU monitor, the, uh, the weather which is freaking out on me, uh, I've got show desktop, virtual desktops, trash can, so theoretically I could almost do away with this top panel, which I do do sometimes, um, I just auto hide it and then, uh, and then I've got even more room on my desktop to work, so it's all fun stuff. Um, yeah, along the top here, I've only got the indicator applet, uh, indicator applets going, so I'm all ready for Unity when it makes the switch, and, um, yeah, I don't really use that many GNOME applets anyway, so I'm fairly desktop independent. Um, this is the system that I do most of my work on, but I'm trying to get used to KDE and use KDE some more, um, uh, and I'm back on Pardis again, uh, from Linux Mint, uh, 10 KDE. Um, and yeah, that's about it. You've listened to me for about uh, 10 minutes of just waffling on. So if you managed to stick through this long, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, hopefully we've got big things happening in the future. We've got, of course, we've got GNOME 3 that will be coming out soon. There's an alpha that just released about that. Um, so at some stage I'll be having a look at GNOME 3. Uh, we've also got, of course, uh, Unity and Ubuntu 11.04. In, uh, in about 20 days we've got OpenSUSE 11.4 very confusing don't confuse the two uh, but yeah hopefully I'll be looking at those in the near future and uh, but until then uh, sit tight and uh, have a nice day